Thank you, Richard, for your kind introduction. And thank you, all of you, for being here. Well, this project talks about uh, conservation. It's an ongoing project, conservation of uh, Louis Nevelson in Manhattan, New York. Uh, the goal of this presentation is to show you the process of selection, the most adequate uh, cleaning methods for a complex treatment with many logistical demands and ethical considerations. We would like to share with you our experience and findings concerning the working properties of a range of gels, thickeners, and viscosity modifiers, the means that we tested uh, for this project. Yeah. Oh, that's, sorry. So the Chapel of the Good Shepherd was built in 1977 when the original neo-Gothic church was torn down to make way for the city corp scapecraper. You, as you can see in the left corner of the image, um, there is the church and, and the scapecraper. The church is situated, it's located in um, Lexington Avenue and 54th Street. It's 10 minute walking from Grand Central North. Uh, unlike this, I also see uh, this image uh, shows you the room. It's the north, north um, wall of the of the room, and it's composed of seven sculptures. It's an installation. Unlike Nevelson, early works uh, made from founded objects, uh, the St. Peter's Church sculpture are made from pieces of plywood cut to be, to specific uh, shapes. Install in initially assembled. Um, in section of site, and a first coat of a spray was applied. Then uh, they took the assembled pieces and brought into the chapel, assembled together, and uh, some more than one um, layer of the same paint was applied. The walls uh, matched the color of the sculpture. And I'm, I want to show you all the pieces that form uh, this installation, and this is the cross of the Good Shepherd. This is the three columns of the Trinity. This is the frieze of the Apostles, and I just want to stop here just a second to, to, to show you that we are talking about an entire room, and this is a wall. Look at the size of the, of the sculpture. Uh, this is 3.3 .3 meters uh, by four, three meters and also the complexity of the shapes that form these sculptures. And this is the cross of the resurrection. This is grapes and wheat lintel. Sky basement trinity. Well, let's go. The, let's see in detail the restoration paint condition. Uh, from 1986 to 2006, a restorer was hired to overpaint the sculpture surface, probably to cover losses, dirt, or any damage. Small areas of restoration paint application over time became all covering. By 2006, the entire room, including all the sculptures, had been repainted many times. We know from archival research that Louis Nevelson left instructions to keep the presentation surface pristine white. In this first image, let's see, this first, um, you can see that the paint layer is thick, it's uneven, and it's textured with brush strokes and thick applications. It was applied unevenly and without any consideration of the original intent. Now the restoration paint is in very bad condition. condition. In, this is, in the second photo on the top, um, you can see the brown staining and it's not only in this specific photo, it's in many places in the installation. And also in the third photo, the, the upper part right, it's, uh, you can see that the paint is um, powdery. And uh, in, the in the second photo of the bottom part, 
it's the same. You can, it's a detail. I'm not sure if you can really see the detail, but you can see that there, this person took the paint, applied it in the surface, and just randomly, like it's a polka dot in this area. <laughs> and in the third one, the last one in the, oh, sorry, in the bottom right corner, uh, you can see that the paint layer is bubbling, crackling, and finally flaking all throughout the installation. Well, the first step before determining a proper course of treatment was to examine and document the sculpture and analyze the paint layer to identify composition and condition. This first photo that you can see, it's a detail of the cross of resurrection, and the first layer of paint that it's the original, it's a yellow white. The second one, it's a coal white, it's a restoration paint layer. And this black, it's a black dot, it's a, it's a hole, and it's a loose from a nail. In the second photo, it's a stratigraphy, it's not embedded. And um, we analyzed um, the paint layer with um, with GSMS and FTIR and solid stain NMR for both the restoration and the, and the original. And we know that the original is an alt kit and the restoration is an polyvinyl acetate. The um, pigment, we analyzed the, the, the pigment, it's a, a titanium oxide with XRF. Well, the pentradithazol. We we had a meeting. We had a meeting with a group of conservators involved, with um, with Chris McClunchin from the MoMA, a the scientist, and and Cindy Kellett from Pratt University, that are the two chemists involved in this project. And we were looking for for evident signs of degradation, and obviously the brown staining and the white powder are really, they really show us uh, how bad was the condition of the paint. We took samples, uh, Chris took samples from the original paint, the restoration paint, the brown stain, and the white powder. And in all the analysis, he found the pentradithazole. I will call it PE, just to not, don't say all the time pentradithazole. And then um, Cindy confirmed with, uh, with the solid state NMR that it's pentradithazole. Well, I'm saying pentradithazole. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see. When, uh, this PE, it's a, it's a polyol. You see it in uh, 19th uh, in the production of the alkyd paint. And we know that the, the alkyd that it's in, in this painting, it's in a good condition. If you see in the cross-section, it's, it's uh, the same color throughout and without brain, browns in any part. And we took many, some, some samples around the, the room. And, and um, what else? Yes, I think. See, it was, it was in good condition. So if we take a look to the spectra, we can see that the polyvinyl acetate as a reference is the first, and then the second it's the, our sample, and the third it's uh, the original alt kit. And we can see the peaks that, uh, that identify the polyvinyl acetate, and then an area that overlaps, and it, it is the PE. And we can see that the, this PE that was originally in the alt kit immigrates to the PE, to the, PE, to the polyvinyl acetate. When, because we know that the alt kit is in good condition, we know that the PE is bounded. And if we have PE that it's migrating on the surface, it's because there, it was excess of PE in the composition of the alt kit. And maybe because of the application of the um, emulsion of polyvinyl acetate on top, it realized a part of, the, of this PE and move it on the top of the, of the sculpture. 
and also the samples from the brown and the white powder are pure P. In this photo, we want to show you the two treatment options that we discussed for a long time. One was the consolidation of the paint layers and preserve the restoration, cleaning the restoration paint layer, or removing and uncover the original out kit. And as you can see, the original paint, it's in pretty good condition and also just looking at it, it's, it has no minimal cracks, no, it's well, well bounded to the support, minimal losses. And it was not only in this spot, we did some in, in different areas and also to test that if it was possible to remove the, the, the restoration pin layer. Well, we tried to clean it and any of the system we tried worked. All of them modify and solve the pain layer, the restoration pain layer. And the other day we went to the church, Sarah and I, and also it depends because it's not, the, the room is not controlled, the, the climate is not controlled. Some days, if you touch the sculpture, it's powdery all around and everywhere. So we did some solubility tests and we found that water um, swells the restoration paint in the pH 6.5 to 9 and also the two propanol 17-99% um, swells the, the PBA paint and neither of those, these uh, two um, solvents affects the alkyd. We also tried the benzyl alcohol in a carrier and in a low percentage, it does not affect the alkyd. Well, the requirements for the system to remove the overpaint, because we saw that it's possible and it might be, it might be better than conserve the restoration paint layer also because it's in better condition, the original. Um, it's the, the requirements for the symptoms are easy to apply on vertical surfaces and complex shapes, minimal solvents used to reduce toxicity and environmental impact. You have to think that this room has no ventilation. And control solvent penetration to avoid uh, overweighting. This is a photo that I want to show you before I go in deep of all the careers that we try because it shows you all the layers that we are finding. Actually, we are finding more, but this is a future questions and problems because the, the conservators apply many, many times and we are finding others too. So in this case, that we are talking about the, to remove this overall uh, cool white restoration layer, the poly, polyvinyl acetate. It's quite thick, as you can see. And then there is the yellow white original and in the middle, we find that like a gray interlayer that we try to analyze and see what is this because everything we try stops to this layer. And at the beginning, we were like, we have to find something that goes through this layer. But then working and working and testing, we found out that this layer helps us to stop before, before you arrive to the original. And we are sure that we are not getting to the original because we see visually this gray layer. And then when we remove with the carrier the, the um, upper part of the p uh, polyvinyl acetate, we went to this, um, to this um, surface and we just clean off with uh, two isopropanol, not a little bit quite quick and it's, it gets closer to the yellow. We, we check it with a UV light and it still gives us a, the fluorescence of PVA. So we are, even though you see yellow, we know that really thin layer of PVA is still on top, but, which is good also because we know that we are not interacting with the alkyd and we can see and it's really close to the original presentation surface. So let's go. We tried five, actually we tried more, but 
All of these are the ones that remove the PVA layer. And I'm going to compare and say you uh, the pros and cons of each one, but it's um, based on our requirements. So how you apply the PEMULEN, we try with TEA and with 2 propanol and also with benzyl alcohol at 5%, 5 and also 3% because it depends on the area. It's better to reduce the benzyl alcohol because, yes, the, the, the alkyl is in very good condition, but of course in our entire room, not everywhere, it's in a good condition. And, and if, if it, it, it is some like degraded the alkyd that you don't see because you have the PVA, this goes and interacts with the alkyd. So it is good for everything, but sometimes not. And so you take the PEMULEN, you apply it with a spatula on the surface, and this in particular takes 10 minutes dwell time. Less than this does not, and does, does not react. And more than that, does not more does does not remove more paint layer, remove swell. And then we with a spatula because it's thick, this PVA, we remove the big part and then clear with the propanol. So the pros are that it's easy to apply, remove the PVA paint, um, does not alter the alkyd paint, but. It requires um, to ben uh, the benzyl alcohol to, for an efficient paint removal with just a buffer water or to propanol does not work. Mm, a minimal, it has a minimal action. Then we tried the Clusel M with to propanol and you can brush it on the surface and if it's thicker, you can also apply with the spatula and the system is the same. You've applied, leave it, this also 10 minutes, scrape off the PVA and then clear with two propanol and cotton wool. The pros are the same. The cons are that you need the two propanol and also the, the dwell time, it's high, 10 minutes, it's, it's a lot for, for us thinking about the entire room. Then we tried the rigid chemical gel with two propanol. The chemical gels, as my colleagues presented before, are um, the CSGI, they, they have three types, the extra, the maxi, and the dry. And this in particular, it's the dry. You, you put it in this um, bath. We use it at Tupperware with the uh, two, uh, two propanol. And then you dry it with a paper and you apply it on the surface. And it sticks very well and it has complete surface contact. You don't need weight, especially because it's vertical. And then you have globs and the same. You remove it and scrape it and wipe it. This, the pros are, are that remove the PVA paint, does not alter the alkyd paint, complete surface, as I said. I can, can be reused several times because you put it again um, back to the, to the bath and reuse it. The cons is that are kind are hard to handle without ripping them. After the first application, they break and you ended up with this amount of pieces that you have to match together and you have these overlaps in between the pieces that then you, when you remove and try to clean it, it's obviously uneven. And uh, if you apply again, the application, it's, uh, it's not homogeneous, and the part that you applied before with the new one. And the other um, con is that the gel uh, requires long time dwell, 20 minutes, it's a lot. And the other one is the exposure to the, to the vapor of the alcohol. You have to think that, well, there is not a lot of solvents inside of your gel, but you are sitting on your scaffolding with the Tupperware there, gloves and mask, but you have to open the Tupperware, take the, 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 the gel, dry and put, and then put it back and you open this, this Tupper. And just this, the, the, the fact that you open and closed, it is an expo exposure for the operator. 
and we could we could we could feel it after one day that you are because we did a, a small test oh, sorry a small test uh, because the, the cleaning is really successful but then you say okay let's try a big piece and see the time and the results in a in a big area a big I mean like this and it took us 25 hours oh my five minutes I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh no, I'm so excited to explain all the experience. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it for later for questions. <laughs> wow, it was 25 when I tried before. So the PVA borate gel. Uh, the PVA borate gel, it was the most successful by now. You put it on, uh, on a remay and then you you push it in on the surface. It just takes two minutes, even less, but two minutes and well. And then you scrape it and, and with the two propanol, uh, and just clear it. The pros are the same as the others. The good thing is that it cleans or it removes the PVA paint layer with just pH buffer water at 8.5. The cons of this is that the PVA borate gel drips upon contact with the surface. Then we, we met uh, uh, Chris and, and then we, we talked with Richard and we tried the Santham gum trying to solve this problem of the, re, of the dripping. We tried a lot of Santhams with a lot of recipes and at the end the only, the only way to, to, to make the Santham gum work was with 5% of benzene alcohol. The rest are actually, it's one of the best uh, gels to, to remove it. Um, all, the, all, the, all the other ones that we tried, this was the best one to remove it. And it, the dwell time is just two minutes. Summarizing all this information. So the rigid chemical gel does not, uh, um, it, you, your, the result is not even, the time. Hemulene, rigid, and Clusel, too much, 10, 20 minutes. Um, solvents, Pemulene, Santham, Clusel, and rigid chemical gel, either isopropanol for the Clusel and the rest, benzyl alcohol. PVA borate, just water, but it drips. Just to see how it works, before, during the treatment, you can see the, the application of the gel. Actually, to reduce the drip, we are cleaning a less, uh, uh, a smaller area with a less gel, and you scrape it off with the spatula. You see, you see the the thickness of this um, of this layer, and the result that it's yellowish. So. Further research, we are doing mock-ups uh, in an aging chamber, explore, not, we are not, ex yeah, we are still exploring with CSGI. We are trying to reduce with this gel, with the PVA borate gel, reduce the dripping, and we had kind of successful, we increased the borate and it stays better, but it still drips. We try the PG5 and PG6, and the PG5 cleans just with water. And then, Richard is coming. <laughs> the 20, no, Wednesday. Sarah say yes. And uh, Cindy, oh, sorry again. The NMR, NMR um, Cindy Kellett at Pratt Institute is doing NMR mouse to study the effects of the treatment on the ALK kit. And, perfect. And there is um, a publication she went to Bilbao in uh, May, it, it Teach Art, and we are waiting for spending a public, pending publication in Microchemical Journal. Please follow our project. We have a blog. Actually, the church has a blog and we have a space. And I have to thank you. We have to thank you, all the group, because... You know that in this complicated, uh, every, every, always it's important to collaborate with all kind of professionists. And in this project, there are conservators, chemists, 
different kind of chemists, um, engineers, architects, and of course the church. Thank you so much.